Welcome to the Fit 15 Podcast Show, where you'll find health and fitness inspiration, motivation, and information shared in 15-minute episodes. Tune in while getting a move on to make leading and enjoying the benefits of a healthy lifestyle almost too easy. It's the Fit 15. And now your host, Katherine Basu. Welcome to the Fit 15 Podcast Show. I'm your host, Katherine Basu. And if you've been listening to the show for a while, you've probably guessed that I really enjoy running. I have a lot of guests, including the last two guests of the show who talk about running or running related apps, but I'm also a big fan of yoga. Running was my first fitness love. Yoga has become a more recent fitness love and I'm always trying to get my fellow runners to enjoy yoga more. Today's episode is hopefully going to encourage you to take my advice here because you're going to hear from a special guest who's actually my private yoga instructor. She does not live in Hermosa Beach though, so how am I enjoying sessions with her? Kayla is actually one of the Fit Armadillo fitness instructors, so if you don't know about Fit Armadillo, that is the company that I run when I am not running, enjoying yoga, or recording episodes of the Fit 15. And at Fit Armadillo, we specialize in private fitness sessions provided over live to a video chat. So you and your instructor, whether it's a personal trainer, yoga instructor, or Pilates instructor, are seeing each other in real time, and you'll get feedback in real time, and you'll get to enjoy your private session. Just like I do with my yoga, I especially love using the yoga sessions myself because I don't have to get stressed out going to and from the studio and dealing with traffic. I can take a break during my busy day as a business owner to get a great stretch in, feel more flexible, have a great compliment to my running routine. And you can do so too if you go to fitarmadillo.com slash Kayla. You'll be able to enjoy your own private session with Kayla as well. So without further ado, I want to introduce you to Kayla, my guest today. Kayla Curran is a yoga teacher, writer and constant traveler. She helps people living with chronic illnesses find relief through yoga. Welcome to the Fit15 podcast show, Kayla. I'm so excited to have you here today. Thanks. I'm excited to be chatting with you. So here on the podcast, we recently had an episode where we talked about yoga for kids, but obviously, you know, we mostly think about yoga for adults and wanted to have you chat today with us about what are the general benefits of yoga for, for adults. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a lot of different benefits and a lot of people I know started doing yoga just for the physical benefits or they saw, I mean, you can't see me, but I'm doing air quotes of getting the the yoga body of being very thin and very lean. Mm -hmm. Um, And then a lot of people after practicing for a few months started to feel a lot of the other benefits, which are more mental or emotional. Um, Yoga's been shown to be very, very effective in reducing stress more so than other types of exercise which is very interesting. So I think, and I work with people with chronic illness and I know that stress plays a role in in basically every illness from a cold to something more severe like cancer. So building a regular practice that helps you manage stress, I think is so important. Yoga can also help you sleep better, which is also tied into stress. And it does have those physical benefits as well. If you're doing a more, a more active vinyasa practice, it can help with a little bit of cardio and and strength training as well. Awesome. So I've definitely experienced what you just talked about myself because I am a big runner and we we actually work together. (laughs) So we can tell the audience that. But but I didn't even, I tried yoga, you know, initially just to try it from a friend and I hated it. And then I had Mm -hmm. to try it when I was injured. I could really do not much else. And then I started to love it. And it wasn't because, you know, the first class, it wasn't easy for me. So that was, you know, not why I loved it, but it was over time just because I really didn't have much more I could really actually physically do. Just, I really found the mental benefits to be huge. And yeah, I was going through like a big transition in my life at that time. So I just found that that really helped. And then now like, I don't feel like myself if I don't if I don't have yoga in my life, you know, mm-hmm. as often as I can. So definitely can speak to that and, and have been surprised by that. And I guess for people that are listening who haven't tried yoga yet and are wondering, well, you know, how can this help me? Like maybe they, we need to get them convinced that they should try it for different fitness goals they have. Mm-hmm. Can you share with us some ways that yoga would help people achieve other fitness goals? So perhaps like their strength goals or their 
or their cardiovascular fitness goals, how does yoga play a role in, in that? Mm -hmm. So I think as well, the most important part is finding the right teacher for you um, because there are a lot of different yoga teachers and different yoga styles and some are more focused on mental and meditation or spiritual aspects and some are more focused on the physical. So really knowing what you're looking for, if you're looking at to help you build the physical part of your workout or if you're looking for something that's going to help you on your rest day where you're, you don't want to actually be doing that much strength building but want to to deeply relax because I think a lot of times when we relax we go like, great it's my day off I'm gonna watch my tv show or whatever but that's not actually relaxing to the brain <laughs> right right <laughs> um so I think yeah there's kind of those two parts of it and that can help you deeply relax which helps you recover faster which can help you then get more out of your next workout and then it can also physically aid you i think balance is very important so if you're doing a lot of strength training or running as you know or cycling yeah. um, um, you can get very very tight and that can lead to injury and the same is true the opposite if you only work on flexibility and don't work on strength that can also lead to injury and you can overstretch yourself and there's some yogis i mean it's more common in dancers but some some yoga advanced yoga practitioners get kind of these dancer injuries because they're focusing so much on the flexibility part and not on the strength part. So mm -hmm. I think, yeah, I think I, in, um, in summary, in answer to your question, it can really help you find balance and what you need to create that balance depends on the rest of your workout plan. So whether you need something to help you deeply relax or whether you need some stretching and a bit more strength to, to help you reach your other fitness goals. Awesome. I know, it, like you said, I definitely agree that the instructor themselves can play a big role, but can you help us shed some light? I mean, I get confused sometimes between the different types of <laughs> yoga. Can you like maybe mention like a few of the most popular formats and, and just generally how they're different from each other? Mm -hmm. So probably the most common classes are vinyasa flow and they're often just called flow classes. And these come from the Ashtanga school. So they're not, they're quite different to Ashtanga, but kind of the same um, and power yoga also kind of flows from that Ashtanga stubble. So those three are going to be the more active ones. There's like your heart rate will go up. You'll be using your muscles. You'll be doing. I hate interrupting Kayla because she has such an awesome, nice, relaxing voice. But for those of you who are joining us for a walk and only have 15 minutes, that is your halfway point reminder. You want to turn around now. Chaturanga, just like push-ups, there'll probably be core work involved, and then we'll still be the stretching and, and the meditation and the relaxing, but those are, are kind of the more active practices. Mm -hmm. And then Hatha Yoga is kind of the, the in-between. It is a, a physical flowing practice, but the movements are usually a lot more gentle, and that's also a very common style. And then on the other end, you have Yin Yoga or restorative yoga, which are very slow moving uh, you hold poses for three to five minutes, so you're really only doing a handful of poses in each one-hour class, and those are much more focused on restoring the body and restoring the mind. Awesome. That, that, helps. that helps me, and I'm sure it'll help some of the <laughs> listeners as well who are looking for what they might want to do. So why is a regular yoga practice so important to you then, Kayla, just to make it a little personal here? <laughs> yeah, definitely. So I actually had a, a sort of similar story to you, how I started yoga. Uh, I was diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome when I was a teenager, and I had been very, very active when I was younger. I was a competitive swimmer. I was on every single school sports teams, and now all of a sudden I was wiped, and I couldn't do anything. And people had kind of kept recommending to me, oh, why don't you try meditation? Why don't you try yoga? And I brushed it off. I thought it sounded a little bit woo-woo to me. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to do it. And then eventually when I was in university, I went to this holistic health clinic and they ran yoga and meditation programs out of the clinic. And so that was actually the first time I'd ever really done yoga. And so for me, I came to it from very not, not the kind of person that wanted to just like get the yoga body because <laughs> right, I didn't right. want to do it. I only did it because my doctor kind of said, you need to do it and we're going to know if you go because it's here in the practice. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't escape. <laughs> Couldn't escape. And it was, uh, it was quite gentle. It, it was, I think, based off the yoga program, which is part of the mindfulness-based stress reduction program, which is um, 
the program that John Kabat-Zinn, who's kind of the doctor who's kind of credited with bringing mindfulness to the West and more specifically to the Western medical system. Um, so it's kind of, ba- it was based a bit off his program and um, similar to Hatha Yoga, which is kind of the, the in-between one. And I was doing this meditation course at the same time and I just, I couldn't believe the difference in my health. I felt so much better. And so that's kind of what spurred my yoga practice. And then I started going to yoga classes as well in the city at studios. And I was getting so frustrated because I didn't really have the energy to do the more energetic classes. I just wanted more of the meditation and it was all going so fast. And, and so that, that's kind of what inspired me to, to start teaching as well so that there were more slower classes that can be adapted for different ability levels. Sure. As well. So would you say, like, do you have a favorite format then that, that you like to use with your students? It's a, I like to um, adapt it for, for every student. So now that I am in recovery and I have a lot more energy and I do travel and as you know, yeah. um, so I kind of practice all levels of yoga and the style I practice personally will, will depend on the, of my other activity levels at the moment. So now that it's March, I'm getting a bit into the triathlon season. I'm doing a lot more uh, cardio workouts and starting strength training. So I'm doing less of the more active yoga. But if I'm doing less of the other stuff, then I'm doing more of the active. Mm-hmm. And in terms of the style that I teach, it really depends on the goals of the students. So when I work with people with chronic illness, it's kind of a combination of restorative and yin and hatha. And then if I'm working with people who more want to use it to help build their physical fitness, then I'll do the nyasa. Oh, that's awesome. So I know we talked about this a little bit in the beginning, but any other, you know, physical benefits of yoga that you can mention to, for people that are looking for it for that reason versus the, the mindfulness piece, which we both know is important, but. <laughs> mm-hmm. Definitely. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I do think that it can, I mean, I talked a bit about the flexibility and how that can help balance the tight muscles that you're getting from doing your other kinds of workout and that can help prevent injury which is very important because if you get injured, then you're not able to continue working out. And it can also help build a little bit of cardio and strength as well, especially if anyone is, you know, doing sun salutations and stuff like that, gets a few push-ups in every morning and doing downward dog really builds the, the arm muscles as well. So there's definitely some strength, strength benefits that come with it. Love that. Yeah, I I definitely agree with that. I've noticed, you know, for myself when I'm when I'm doing a good a good flow, my arm muscles are definitely a lot a lot better than when I'm not. <laughs> yeah, definitely, and I think it also um, helping with sleep is very important. And I think all exercise, especially if you don't do it too late at night, can help with sleep. But yoga, there are restorative practices you can do before bed as well. And sleep is so, so important. I know if I don't sleep well, I don't feel like working out. I eat worse. I don't recover as quickly. So just having that tool that can really help you sleep better because it is helping you get into that deep relaxation, I think is so important. Oh, sure. No, definitely. And yeah, especially if you're starting to do like your triathlons and everything, (laughs) sleep is even more important, right? Yeah. (laughs) So one thing I'd, I'd love just to mention for, for the audience, I mean, I know I've worked with, with you personally, Kayla, and what I've loved is that sometimes, you know, I go to a hour yoga class and it's, it's nice. Like, you know, I get a good, a good benefit physically and mentally, but what I've loved is I've been doing 30 minute sessions with you and I feel like I just get so much more out of it because it's so focused to, <laughs> to what I specifically need and I still get the relaxation. So I'm wondering if you can help those of us who are really busy and don't have time for an hour class may or may not have time for 30 minutes with you, how much time is enough time to start experiencing some of these great benefits of yoga? Definitely. This is one of my favorite topics. <laughs> <laughs> and I've uh, been reading some research on it, and they actually did research specifically on yoga, not just other forms of exercise. Hmm. And what they found is that consistency is much more important than length. So even if you can only practice for 10 minutes, if you're doing that at least three times a week, then that is going to be much better than going to the hour class at your studio once every other week. So I think, yeah, even if you only have 10 minutes or 15 minutes, ideally if you can do like a little bit longer, like half an hour Mm -hmm. once a week, but just 
I mean, I think the best, the best practice is the one that you can stick with. Sure, sure. So as I'm thinking about this next question I wanted to ask you, I'm answering it for myself, but wondering for those listeners who want to incorporate yoga on the same day as some of their other fitness activities, do you have any recommendations? And the reason I'm answering this for myself is I'm thinking about different styles might be better for different approaches here, but do you recommend that they do their yoga session, yoga practice before or after other activities? Any insights on that? Mm -hmm. So conventionally in yoga, you're meant to do a practice in the morning, um, unless you're doing specifically for sleep yoga. Mm -hmm. Um, But I definitely play around with this. I often find if I do yoga in the morning before another workout, it's a really great warm up. Mm -hmm. Um, And I find I perform better, um, which I found funny because usually you always do stretching at the end after your workout. Um, But I've, I've actually found that it helps me more to do it before. Um, But I think that that is very personal and I think people can definitely play around with it. But I think that, um, yeah, I think either is fine. Um, If you're gonna do a more active practice, it probably makes sense to do it as a warm up because you don't wanna get very tired from your workout and then try to do a more active practice. Right, right. But if you're doing a bit more of a gentle practice, it might make more sense after. But I think, yeah, that's definitely something that people can play around with. I don't think there's really a, a right answer for that one. Sure. No, definitely. So love chatting with you today, Kayla. Obviously there's so much more we can talk about and I'm I'm trying not to, you know, keep, keep going down with all my questions, but how for the audience who's maybe feeling the same way, how can they connect with you? You know, obviously they can go to Fit Armadillo and you are doing private sessions over the two way video chat there that I've personally been enjoying. And maybe we, I don't want to send too many people there because <laughs> I don't want to have all my time taken up. But um, <laughs> how else can they connect with you besides the armadillo? Mm-hmm. My website is arogayoga.com and I'm blogging there about yoga. So some of the research I talked about is um, up there on the blog and I have some free videos on YouTube as well. People can try out and those are all on the website. So that's probably the easiest place to go. Mm, awesome. That's cool. Anything, anything you'd like to offer the audience that they could, that they could find? I think you sent, sent me a few good links, but want to mention anything about those real quick for people so they can know, know more about why they'd want to check that out. Yeah, I sent you over a couple of free video links. I think I believe I sent the yin yoga for hips. Mm-hmm. Um, just because so you know that I think you have a lot of runners right now that you're yes. a runner. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I thought, yeah, that'd be a fun one to try. And I, it's, it's harder to find those kind of you know, restorative classes at the studio and, as opposed to the more active classes. So I thought that that would be an interesting one for people to try for them to get a different perspective and hopefully stretch out those sore hips. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm definitely going to look, look into that one myself too. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> And then you also had, you have a yoga for creativity challenge you sent over too. Do you want anything you want to share about that? Yeah. So that's a 10 day challenge and 10 minutes each day. So that kind of ties back into what we were just talking about, about building a consistent practice is more important than building a long practice. So yeah, the goal, the goal of that challenge is really to help people get into a routine of doing yoga every day or four or five times a week, however many you can fit in, you can do the challenge. You can take as long as you want to do the challenge, but ideally you'll do it within a couple of weeks. And yeah, so that's just meant to help you get um, yeah into the flow of doing it every day. And I, I know a lot of people here are also running their own businesses, which is why they're so busy. So uh, mm. that's um, I've made it for creativity to, I think yoga can really help with that. You clear your mind and ideas just start flowing in. So hopefully the challenge will help with that. Yeah, I love it. Well, thank you so much for for taking the time to be on the podcast, Kayla. It's been fun chatting with you and learning more about yoga. Yeah, it's been great. Thanks for listening to the Fit 15. For show notes and more, visit fitarmadello.com slash podcast. See you next time. Hey guys, it's Catherine. Hope you enjoyed today's episode of the Fit 15. I do have Kayla coming back tomorrow to talk more about yoga for chronic illnesses and to share more about her personal story and journey with yoga. So I hope you will subscribe to the podcast and enjoy that episode and share it with any of your friends who are suffering from chronic pain to help them out. But before I close out today's episode, I wanted to just let you know that another way you can work with Kayla is through our Job Tree Sizes Challenge, which is coming up Monday, April 16th is the official start date. I haven't really started promoting this yet, but 
in the next few days and early into next week, the first week of April, I will be doing an early bird special. So if you're interested in that, please reach out. Make sure you sign up as soon as possible. I do tend to treat my participants with a private yoga class with Kayla to help them do what my goal is for the Drop Tree Sizes Challenge, which is to learn how to treat their bodies with respect and compassion on their healthy lifestyle journey. So while the challenge is called the Drop Two Sizes Challenge, and that is what I can guarantee you'll be able to do in the 10 weeks if you participate, it is really a goal of mine to help those of you who are looking to get healthy do so in a healthy way, in a way that is what we try to do when we start a yoga practice, which is by showing our bodies compassion versus going on some crazy fad diet that is not what our bodies really want. So I want to let you know about that. If you want to learn more, go to fitarmadillo.com slash D2S. That's D as in drop, two as in the number two, and S as in sizes. Hope to get to work with you this spring. Bye.